Hi, how's it going? I'm Marlena. Thanks for wandering by. So you might be wondering what on earth is the mother-in-law tarot challenge? <laughs> well, um, those of you that have uh, been here before may know that my mother-in-law, whom I only got to know for a brief time before she passed away, um, was a tarot reader and she collect she had a collection of tarot cards that I inherited. Um, well, my partner inherited, but he gave to me um, because I'm the tarot reader in the family now. Um, and I've had these cards and I've shown them before on the channel. I'll, I'll show you some of them now. Um, but what I wanted to do in this mother-in-law tarot challenge is I've been wanting to engage with these cards. A lot of them are kind of falling apart and have, you know, been used and moved and stuff. So there's, um, <clears throat> so they're very precious and fragile. And I, you know, I've avoided like, you know, using them. You can, there's some of them that you can't really shuffle. Um, I've avoided using them because I didn't want to, you know, hurt them or do anything to them um, to mess them up in any kind of way. So, but I have been feeling called to engage with them um, in some kind of way. And so, well, let me open the box and show you a few of the decks. And um, and then what we're going to do is, is I want to kind of take a look at um, the cards because she wrote her interpretation of the meanings of the cards uh, on them. I want to take a look at that and compare, you know, her meanings with my own. And then I want to try to do a small reading uh, for myself with one of one of these decks. So let's see. Let's take a look at the cards first. Then let's explore some of the things she's written on them. And then let's try a reading. That's my challenge to myself today. <laughs> and I want to continue to work with and engage with these cards um, moving forward as well. So you're going to get to see me figure this out <laughs> on camera in you know, uh, you're gonna be along for this ride with me. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at some of these. So first, this is the Astral Tarot and it's not a complete deck, I don't think, um, but I'll just show you a few cards. So as you can see, my mother-in-law, she wrote um, all over these cards and they are super fragile. Um, they have, you know, obviously seen a lot of use. Um, see, some of them are, I showed these in my disheveled decks before. So that's the Astral Tarot. And this one, I don't think I can actually like shuffle and use. So I've got to decide out of these decks, which one I can actually maybe, you know, use for a reading. She also has a, oh my gosh, this one is so precious. She also has a, um, a copy of the, the Hoi Polloi. Oh, there. <laughs> That's just the, uh, the title card there. And this one, I think from what my partner told me was absolutely her favorite. Um, she read with reversals and I guess she, my, my partner told me that they were always on the hunt for this deck. Um, like she wanted a second copy of it because of the backs. Like it's, she read with reversals, but I think she just, she always wanted to know, I guess, if she was laying the cards face down, if it was reversed or not. Um, which is interesting because the way that I always heard or the way that I've understood it is that you want a, a, a back that doesn't immediately let you know if it's reversed, but apparently she did. Um, and you can even see that she has, you know, upright and reversals on uh, meanings on the cards that she wrote. 
So this is the Hoi Polloi. This is, both of these decks are out of print <laughs> and difficult to find, although there is a, a, ver, uh, a modern uh, recoloring of the Hoi Polloi. Um, I think it's called the Moon Baby Tarot. I'm not sure if that one is still available or not. But yeah, so that's the Hoi Polloi, another one of um, the decks that I inherited. And then she has a couple. So she has, wait, this one's older. Let me grab this one. So this is a, um, the Waitsmith. Hold on. I'm off camera making a mess because she has like um, notes that she wrote on blank cards. But anyway, so this is um, a Waitsmith. I want to say, look, she, she put it <laughs> upright on it so she would know. I I wish so much that I had um, her around to be able to ask questions to and find out what, you know, what, what was, what was the, you know, the thinking there behind that, behind the reversals and, and stuff. And I just would, you know, love to have that wealth of knowledge. But as you can see, she wrote all over the cards this one, potentially, I could shuffle without really doing too much harm to it. Um, you can see how beat up it is. and um, But I'm so interested in, you know, the writing on, on the cards. And I want to... I want to explore that more and this is like step one of the mother-in-law challenge where I'm going to be attempting to do that, you know, to to look at these cards and and discover, you know, what she, um, how she worked with them it, as best as I can with the way, with what she wrote on them um, and the energy that I get from them, you know, that's exciting. <laughs> Um, and also quite nerve wracking to be honest with you. So what I, oh, and then she has, this one I think was definitely more, um, um, modern, um, because it is a, whoops. Oh, I pulled out all the full cards. This is a universal weight, which is, it makes me happy that she had this, um, this deck as well, because the universal weight was my first tarot deck. So I have my own copy of, of the universal weight. I think it's like 1990, I want to say 94, 95. I, I'm not sure if it was, uh, I know I got it in 94 or 95. Um, but it, I think it's a 91 copyright. I don't know. Does that matter? Anyway, she wrote all over these as well. And I think because this one had less use um, and isn't as old as the others is one that I can use. I think this is the one. I think this is the one that I can use to read with for myself um, and see how that goes. But you can see she also wrote all over this one and her, her writing is much clearer on these cards. So I think this would be the one that would be best for me to be able to read. Um, and, and read her her interpretations of the cards, which I'm not sure match up with mine or not. Um, and I'm not sure if um, I might even see them as like an oracle message on layered on top of the tarot. We're gonna we're, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out soon. But first, let's just take a look because I I took these cards out. I took the fool out of each one of these decks. And I wanted to look at what she wrote on The Fool with you guys so that we can kind of, you know, just make a, I don't know, we can figure out, like maybe we can investigate here together um, and see if she wrote the same thing. So on the Astral Tarot Fool, she wrote, Creative Adventurous Rebel for the Upright. Look at this Fool card. God, this is an amazing deck. I wish I could get a um, a cleaner copy that I could use. And then on the reversal, she wrote foolish, foolish decisions, fear, no, no, what does that say? No happiness? I'm not sure, it's very faint. And then on the Hoi Polloi, 
Fool. She wrote Creative Adventurous Rebel, Rebels Against Society and Regulation. Um, inner Forces Propelling. Oh, I love that. That doesn't seem so far away from my understanding of the fool. It's like specific to, it feels very specific to like a person, but it doesn't feel like so removed from what we, um, many of us, you know, uh, know about the fool. Foolish decision, fear. Mm, I can't read what's on here. Foolish decision, but so very similar. All right, Cre and here we have creative rebel, adventurer, extravagance, excess, and then reverse, careless, foolish, foolish decision, negligence. That might be what she has here as well that I couldn't read. Negligence, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, these seem right for the fool. Like, um, some of them are funny though. Like, look at this, drinking. <laughs> Thoughtless extravagances, extravagance says mm, vain or naive. Does that say vain or naive? Maybe naive. Immature, no discipline. And then reversed hesitation, bad decision, neglect. So, okay, so I feel like maybe I can work with this. It does seem like, even though these are not necessarily like the specific keywords that I would use for the fool, because what do we always say? Risk taking, um, but we do say adventurous. We do say uh, creativity doesn't always come to mind when I think of the fool, but it's interesting. So, okay, so next, <laughs> what we're gonna do I think is we're gonna use this one, the universal weight. Look, and she colored on the back too so that she would know the upright and reversal. So curious about that. So we're gonna take that. We're gonna take the universal weight and we're gonna do a reading for myself today and see what happens. That's the challenge, that's the idea. All right, so we'll try that next. All right. So what we're going to do is a four card spread that I've, it used to be my tarot in the morning spread that was a lot bigger and I have condensed it these days now to a four card spread that is four positions and I'll put them up on the screen probably for you again. Um, and it is um, to today's purpose and how to embrace that purpose what I should think and what I should do. So purpose, embrace, think, do. So it's a day, you know, today's for today. Also, I am shuffling in reversals um, because she worked with reversals and I, and the cards have reversal messages on them. I don't ever use reversals, but I think I want to try this out with this deck today. So we're gonna shuffle and draw, um, just move things around upside down again. And um, we're gonna shuffle and draw four cards. And we're going to ask the cards, we're gonna ask the energy from my mother-in-law. A little nervous, but very tingly. <laughs> um, what we, sh for me, what I should, um, what today's purpose is, how to embrace that purpose, what I should be thinking about and what I should be doing. Purpose, embrace, think, do. Purpose, embrace, think, do. Are you guys nervous with me? <laughs> I kind of am. I hope I'm not shaking the camera too much. I'm just gonna do my regular way that I shuffle. Today's purpose, embrace, think, do. Let me just make sure that everything is solid here. 
All right. So. Today is purpose. And I think I'm going to um, flip everything over and then I'll do some interpretation of, I'll do some interpretation of the reading after that. I don't know what's going to happen here, how I'm going to feel about it. So we'll, we'll just go as we go, right? Today's purpose, Queen of Wands. And I'll just read loving, I don't know what that is, GD means well, science, grace, good hostess, oh, good, good hostess, charming. <laughs> okay, today's purpose, Queen of Wands. <clears throat> How to embrace that purpose, the King of Swords reversed, conflict, cruel, selfish, bad person, causes conflict. Hmm embrace. Think, and we have the Ace of Wands reversed. Birth, cancel plans, false, false start, cloudy. Interesting. And finally, we have do, which is the Eight of Swords. Crisis, conflict, bad news, prison, bad news, gossip the upright. All right, I'm going to try my best to like, I'm going to try my best to do this reading and kind of integrate my own tarot knowledge and layer in what I'm seeing here with what my mother-in-law has on the cards because it's so hard for me to kind of abandon my own understanding of the tarot in favor of some of these meanings that she's written down here. But um, if the purpose of my day <laughs> is the queen of wands, the purpose of the day would be to, like loving is the word that's sticking out here to me. Um, science, is that, does, is, oh, sincere, that's not science, it says sincere grace, good hostess, and charming. So the purpose of my day is to embody this energy of the Queen of Wands. You know, this does kind of go in line with my idea of the Queen of Wands, although I think of her less as a like charming hostess, but more as a bold, fierce kind of a spirit. But there is that aspect of the Queen of Wands that is very charming. I mean, the Queen of Wands, I've I've studied with my I Ching um, correspondence as well. The um, the Queen of Wands is a leader who gets people behind her, um, and it does make sense that that if she's loving and sincere and is and has grace that that's what people will would respond to so the purpose of my day is to embody this energy of the queen of wands you know it's so funny because my mother-in-law is a red-haired woman um and i feel like she's she, everything that i've heard about her makes her very much a queen of wands so i definitely feel this coming through it's making me a little bit mm -hmm, um like emotional sorry okay so now if my purpose how do I embrace that purpose I don't usually read with reversal so like I gotta kind of figure out what I'm thinking here to embrace this queen of wands I feel like it's it's embracing like this king of swords reversed the cruelty the selfishness the like someone that causes conflict. So like, I think maybe there might be around me and, and this could make sense because, you know, your work, my work day can definitely include, you know, dealing with customers and, and people who are not always the nicest. <laughs> um, and that's just on a like, you know, straight up mundane everyday level. But I think like in the larger scheme of things, 
mm, embracing this kind of energy means that I have to accept that this kind of energy is going to is going to be out there that there are people who are cruel that there is conflict and like I can stick to my purpose my my loving and sincere qualities if I accept that this is just an inevitability and embrace that as an inevitability. All right. And what should I think about? Birth. <laughs> Cancel plans, false start, cloudy. Well, this feels super predictive. Um, you know, perhaps it should be that I'm thinking about um, that there are things that might that I'm that I might be planning that are not gonna work out, you know, that it might be cloudy. Like the ace of wands is the is the inspiration. So I might be blocked, you know, like my inspiration may be blocked. Or I might have the plan, the idea, and then suddenly it'll feel like cloudy. I want I don't I this is not making sense to me right now, this this word birth, but this is like um, like it's slipping through my hands. The, the inspiration is kind of become murkier, um, not as clear necessarily as it once was. So that might be what's going, what I'm thinking about today, um, which I feel like is true in some cases, um, especially on, you know, today, which is the beginning of the week. So, you know, when I have lots of ideas and things that I want to, play out and it might not necessarily work out for me. Um, but if I, you know, c hold true to my purpose, my sincerity and my grace, then I can accept this inevitability of people being, you know, jerks or just, you know, I mean, I'm thinking it's people it really feels like our energies are just things being like, not, you know, not completely, um, smooth right that it's co like conflict and that it might be painful in some way so if i embrace that that is an inevitability if i hold true to my purpose of being embodying this type of energy then i'll i can think about those false starts those ideas that don't necessarily pan out and then i can do okay i can do eight of swords let's see crisis, conflict, bad news, gossip. <laughs> so this feels like, yeah, this feels again, very predictive that this might be coming my way, that there might be g gossip. Um, it makes me nervous to think of things like bad news coming my way um, or prison, but I think I'm going to just layer that in with my understanding of the Eight of Swords. Um, because that's what feels right for me right now, that perhaps with these, this false start with this embrace of the inevitability of things that on a smaller scale, um, there may be some sort of things swirling around me, maybe at the workplace, maybe, um, you know, with, with like, friends or family or whatever, that there may be some like gossipy kind of things or some kind of um, conflict going on. And that doesn't, um, nothing's springing to mind of anything like specifically that's happening in my life right now. Um, but the Eight of Swords as an action um, is for me about like releasing that feeling of being imprisoned or being, you know, kind of trapped by this sort of thing, by this conflict, by this gossip, by this crisis, um, and being able to break free from it. So I think if my purpose is to embrace, is to embrace inevitability of, of this kind of crap and hold true to my grace and sincerity, um, then I can handle this, whatever is coming my way um, and whatever, you know, whatever is swirling around me um, that might break my inspiration, uh, that might make me feel trapped, that I can 
you know, break free from these, this, you know, this prison. Remember that this is like a mental, a mental thing too. I feel like these two are very much connected. Um, okay. So all together, my purpose for today is to embrace a loving and sincere quality that makes people want to get behind me. Um, and that comes from a well-meaning place. Embrace the inevitability that there will be conflict, that there will be jerks, that there will be, you know, things around me that are unpleasant. Think about my ideas, but be aware that they might be, that my ideas might, might, I might have to postpone or cancel. I might start and stop something, or I might get cloudy and not really know what, you know, what, what I'm, what am I meant to do in the first place and do, um, you know, with the, with accepting this idea that people, that there's unpleasantness, that there's conflict, that bad shit happens, then perhaps I can kind of release some mental, um, some mental anguish and free myself from there and do that. Because if the purpose is here, then anything that comes my way here, um, I, I can get, I can, I can move past it because I have this central or this beginning energy to kind of lead me through the rest of the day. Whew. Okay. So yeah, so that's today's purpose. I think I think I want to do one more thing. I think I want to go grab an oracle that feels like it could um, bring this all together for me. I'm going to go grab something that I think might be in keeping with and in line with the energy of my mother-in-law. So one second. Okay, so just based on my intuition and instincts, I looked at my oracle decks and I felt the Isis oracle um, would best match the energy um, that I feel like I'm getting here from, you know, from my mother-in-law's, um, from my mother-in-law's cards and from her, you know, kind of her spirit, really. Um, this is the pocket edition of the Isis Oracle. Isis feels very motherly to me, um, very much in the realm of light and brightness and fire, which is kind of how I feel um, Queen of Wands energy is and my mother-in-law herself. Um, so yeah, so let's shuffle. And this is a great Oracle deck because it... Um, it has, oops, it has the, the the image on the front and the message on the back. So it's a real, um, really good um, oracle to use as like a summary of, um, of a reading. And I feel like that's what we need today. So I'm going to, and by the way, this reading is for, you know, I did for myself. But if it's resonating with any of you out there, um, for yourself and your own life, that's really cool too. Um, I think that that's definitely possible. It can definitely happen. So with these, these are the type of cards that I cut, that I do a shuffle and then I cut in order to, um, and I don't do that. I only do that with these types of cards that have the message on the back and I, All right, so from Isis, we have, that's a really interesting image. Okay, truths unveiled. There are times when appearances of people, places, and things are deceptive. You will sense this when something feels uncomfortable within you, when you notice feelings of anxiety or doubt within you. You may think there is something wrong with you, but actually you are intuitively sensing that all is not as it appears to be. Trust what you feel, not what appears to be. Wow, that seems 
Like, I don't even, I feel like I don't even need to say anything else because that feels like really key to today's purpose that like the authenticity is here. The purpose is, is to know, you know, to trust myself and not necessarily all of this garbage that may be, you know, swirling around outside of me. Like this is like internal um, and there's going to be, there's going to be, you know, stuff to deal with. There's going to be, um, you know, conflict and things happening um, regardless, but I can't let it um, affect me in the way where I think that it means that there's something wrong with me. Like, don't get in that mental trap. Um, don't, you know, doubt my, my creativity and if my inspiration just kind of feels kind of cloudy. Truths unveiled. I don't know how this um, image is connected because I don't, um, I don't know my Egyptian mythology well enough, but truths unveiled. So, all right. So that, that's it. Um, I feel, I feel really good about this. I feel like I got some really good insight. Um, I feel like I was able to read and work with these cards, which was the challenge. And um, I think I have, you know, an idea of how to prepare myself for my day ahead. And um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, I might do something like this again. I want to work with and engage with these cards in in a different way, in different ways. I want to um, incorporate these, these cards into my practice as well. So thanks for, thanks for joining me. Thanks for sticking around. And I hope that you all have a beautiful, wonderful day. Bye.